I'd like to welcome you to our Monday Thursday service. It's a special time during Holy Week that we come together to take communion with one another and to remember the great sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for you and for me. We've been doing these services for many years now. Years ago, there was a couple, Mike and Sharon Brzinga, that came to this church and uh, they moved off to another state because of their work. But Sharon came up to me and she said, Todd, do we have a Monday, Thursday service? And certainly through the years, um, we had observed in other churches Monday, Thursday, but she asked me if we had a service. I said, no, but we can pray about having one. And she said, well, I gave my life to Christ at a Monday, Thursday service. And I would love if we would have one at this church. So we began having Monday, Thursday services all these years. And it's been a special time as we grow again closer to one another in our relationship with the Lord. So we welcome you here and grateful that we can offer this service uh, through the internet and allow us to still worship together during this holy week. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this special night. And we thank you, Father, for those who are watching and participating. Would you bless them, bless their families? God, we're grateful tonight for those that are going to grow closer to you through this time. And we pray, God, that you would just anoint Bill as he reads scripture and anoint Grace and Thurman as he sings and the beautiful choir arrangement, God, that we hear and and then the parrot family later in the service. May this be a sweet time of worship and communion together. And we'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear these words from Mark 14, verses 32 through 41. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and he prayed that if it be possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to the disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for just one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and he prayed the same thing. When he came back, he found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Enough, the hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer.
Hear these words from Luke 22, verses 7 through 20. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to pre prepare for it? They asked. He replied, as you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, all furnished, make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and he said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, he gave thanks and he broke it, and he gave it to them saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Do you feel the world is broken? Do you feel the shadows deepen? Do you know that all Every people and tribe, every nation and 
Maybe you've been asking what the word Monday means. I remember years ago at another church where the pastor announced that we would be having a Monday Thursday service and a gentleman in the church said, well, well preacher, is the service going to be on Monday or Thursday? And the pastor said, not Monday, but Monday. Monday is a word that comes from a Latin word, mandatum, which means mandate or command or commandment and Jesus shared a command in the upper room with his disciples and I would like to share this passage of scripture with you found in John chapter 13 it was just before the Passover festival Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the father having loved his own who were in the world he loved them to the end the evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted judas the son of simon iscariot to betray him jesus knew that the father had put all things under his power and that he had come from god and was returning to god as he got up from the meal he took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those have had, who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that's why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and he returned to his place. Do you understand what I'm doing for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. And then we read on over, uh, beginning with verse 33 my children I will be with you only a little longer you will look for me and just as I told the Jews so I tell you now where I am going you cannot come a new command I give you love one another as I have loved you so you must love one another by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. What a beautiful command Jesus gave that we are to love one another as he has loved us. And by this, all people will know that we are his disciples if we love one another. Not only did Jesus model humility by washing his disciples' feet, 
but he taught them how to love. And there was no greater love this world has ever known than when Jesus laid down his life on the cross to save you and me from our sin. A verse that we've been sharing a lot lately is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so as we gather around the table and as you gather with your family or with your loved ones or maybe even by yourself, we are going to share this time of communion together, understanding that the bread represents the body of Christ and the cup represents the blood that he shed for you and for me for the remission of our sins. And I pray as we gather around the communion table and you're invited to partake, if you are a believer, if you're a follower in Jesus Christ, you are welcome at this table. But when Jesus gathered with his disciples, he took bread and it said that he gave thanks for it. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this bread, symbolic of the body of Christ. And Lord, as we eat this bread today, may we remember the suffering and the pain that you uh, bared for us so that we might experience life. And so, Father, we thank you again. We ask your blessings upon it. And for all those who partake, in the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Jesus said, this is my body, which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after they took the bread, then it said that he took the cup and that he gave thanks for it. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this cup symbolic of your blood that was shed for us. And Father, I pray as we drink the cup this evening that we would be reminded of the blood that poured out for our sin, for our guilt, for our punishment. And Father, we just thank you that you would love us so much that your son Jesus would be sacrificed, the spotless Lamb of God, that we might experience eternal life when we place our faith and trust in you. So Father, again, uh, thank you, thank you. Just does not seem adequate to say how thankful we are for what you did for us. We are eternally grateful, Father, for your sacrifice. And we ask your blessings upon this cup in the strong name of Jesus, amen. Jesus said, whenever you drink this cup, it is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. And we are so thankful that you were able to worship with us tonight on this Monday, Thursday service. And again, we pray that you would join us again in the morning at 6.30 a.m. as we pray around the cross and as we prepare our hearts for Easter. And I hope you will join us Easter Sunday morning and invite friends and family to join us uh, for worship through live stream or Facebook Live or on the internet as we have, I pray, the greatest celebration of Easter we've ever had, even though we won't be here together. Pray that thousands of people will hear the good news of Jesus Christ and his love. But may we pray together, and after I pray, it said after they ate that they sang a hymn, and then they went to the Mount of Olives. So grateful that the parent family will be closing this service out, and, and we just give praise to God and sing Hosanna for his faithfulness and his love. May we pray together. God, thank you again for this sweet service. Again, I thank you for the beautiful music, the power of your word, and for the great example, God, that you gave us 
when you washed your disciples' feet and then you commanded them and us to love one another as you have loved us. And Father, during this season of coronavirus and anxiety and fear, may we feel a peace that comes from our faith and trust in you. And, and Father, that we would remain thankful and grateful for everything you've done for us. And Lord, I, I say it quite often, if you never answered another prayer, you've already done enough for us when you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross. And so Father, as we close out this service, may we just be grateful and sing Hosanna and thanks to you for everything you've done. We love you and we praise you in the strong name of Jesus, amen.